talking Amelia, Amelia How could you leave me on this way? And I knew I should have stayed away Amelia, Amelia There's nothing more left to say It's time to go our separate ways Say the time is a healer I don't believe what they say I'm broken anyway Ever since we parted All this pain started It's never ending On or all this emptiness Time I try to get inside You're on a mile No time for talking Amelia, Amelia How could you Lead me on this way I knew I should have Stayed away Amelia, Amelia There's nothing More left to say It's time to go separate ways Don't tell me you love me when you're sorry It's not enough Who know Only this time I woke and broke and free Amelia Amelia way I knew I should have stayed away Amelia Amelia there's nothing more left to say it's time to go our separate ways Amelia Amelia how could you lead me on this way I knew I should Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live stream Tuesday and a little bit more of a somber start to the live stream having a look at that version of Amelia which is me singing with myself so thank you guys over on Patreon for requesting that to open up tonight's live stream I can see you guys in the live chat room tonight who do we have in there we have uh, Leslie Elaine for the music Julesy Terry PM112 Pamela Dwayne Barbara Kathy uh, Howard Eddie Tammy Billy Julesy uh, Karen's in there as well Bella Rose Susie Bob uh, Claudio and uh, yeah Debbie Tally Terry Paul Cindy and yeah how to go through again hello guys thank you for joining me on this Tuesday night right first of all as I've been mentioning on all of the live streams recently we've been getting record after record after record of likes and we're going to try and continue that theme tonight. So, again, it's going to be a ridiculous target that we're going to be aiming for. And the likes goal for tonight is 440. So, <laughs> there you go. Uh, if you could leave a thumbs up as you come through the door, that would be much appreciated. If we hit the target tonight, we're going to be having Phil Jam number 124. And I knew that without having to look at it because I only just remembered to change it before we went live while Amelia, the song, my song, was playing. So, if you could hit that thumbs up, that would be great. And, I mean, true to form, whenever I start these live streams, everything moves around from a screen capturing perspective, but I've just adjusted it so that we can get the likeometer up on screen to see how many likes we have so far, 218. 228 just jumped up by 10. So that means we're looking for 192. 
I don't know if that's right or not, but it sounds good. That's the number that popped into my head. And if we get a few more people, then it'll be 200 uh, or... Well, it's 203. Now I can just about work that out. So thank you guys for the thumbs up and yeah, getting an early spike of the likes for tonight's live stream. So the gremlin report for tonight actually isn't very long at all. I think everything was working as it should do, which always makes me suspicious that something <laughs> big is going to happen where everything stops working. But we'll see. I think you can see me. Hopefully you can hear me as well. I can see the levels seem to be fine. So we'll keep on pushing forward with the live stream. And I'm sure that you guys in the live chat room let me know um, if everything's okay. But I think you do start shouting in there if things aren't quite working as they should be. So... Let's get the names of my patrons up on screen because they make this possible in the first place and are the foundation of everything that I do, as I always say. So thank you guys for all of your support over on patreon.com forward slash Wings of Pegasus. And if you want to get involved yourselves, you can head over there. I very rarely ever show the link, but there you go. Patreon.com forward slash Wings of Pegasus. And you can become a free member over there as well if you want to. And the difference between the free members and the member members are <laughs> that some videos are and updates and all stuff like that is just for kind of, I call them patrons because that's what it's to do with P Patreon and being a patron of somebody, hence supporting them and allowing them to do what they do. So I refer to them as my patrons, which is how the website started, uh, Patreon. I think that was their whole idea, but now they're calling it members and non-members and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, patrons, which are the names going across the bottom of the screen now, uh, they are the foundation of everything that I do and allow me to do it. So huge thank you to you guys, but you can join in over there as a free member. It just means that yeah, you won't get some of the posts that are for the patrons, but I still do things like upload the live streams over there after I finish here and that's accessible to free members over there as well just in case you miss a live stream and you struggle to find it on the channel then there will be a post from that evening on Patreon so you can access it there if you want to but let's get rid of that and the only thing that we haven't got on screen is the donations tab and as I always say, you don't have to donate, just watching is great, maybe leave a thumbs up, that would be much appreciated uh, to get us closer to that target. And we'll have a fill jam at the end of the live stream if we hit that target, which is what we always do, regular viewers will know. But yeah, we'll keep an eye on that thumbs up. Donations wise, you don't have to donate, but if you can't resist, I think it's important that you know between 45 and 60% goes to YouTube through the super chat window and between three and 5% goes to PayPal. And there's a PayPal link in the description below. And I can see that there have been some donations already. So thank you guys for these. It's Paul who has donated $5 in that super chat window. And Paul says, here we grow again. 353,000 subscribers. Let's have fun tonight in this happy place. Spike the likes. All y'all rock. So thank you for that poll, which reminds me, we have to get this up on screen again. And I almost feel like I've already done it because it seems so soon since the last one, 352,000 subscribers. But 353 again amazing number and thank you for subscribing hitting the notification bell and all of that cool stuff we'll keep on pushing forward and just see where we end up but certainly at 353,000 is quite a nice number we'll see what happens in the future whether people keep on joining in but you know it's great to have more people join in with the channel and join in with the live streams it's great to See you guys on a Tuesday and a Saturday, 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, if you're not sure as to when to tune in. But yeah, great to see you guys in the live setting rather than in the comments section exclusively. Let me... Oh, I'm going to have to start this again. The people cheering, and then if I click on that again, it gets rid of that and hopefully rid of the people cheering as well. I'm hoping that that's worked. Well, I can't hear it, so hopefully, yeah, it has worked. 
Getting back into the super chat window, we have another donation in there from Steve. So thank you for this, Steve. And there's a donation of five dollars. And the message is: Which singers have you found to need the most pitch correction and also the least? Uh, so thank you for that, Steve. And I mean, in terms of levels of pitch correction, I'd say that it's uh, difficult to say because all I'm doing really is analysing either a natural vocal or a pitch corrected vocal. But what I do tend to do with my videos is know the person's voice who I'm going to be analysing anyway so that I get a, a vibe for their natural voice and how they sound live. Uh, even though when somebody is singing live and it has been pitch corrected, you know, to my ears, it really does stand out. But with the amount that's used, obviously the people that are accurate pitch wise and can hit the average frequency of what they're singing over the top of, you know, the note that sits in the key with the backing that they're performing with, then those singers don't need pitch correction. And it's like going back to, yeah, the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, a lot of singers there just sang. And there wasn't really any manipulation, at least from a digital perspective. When you get to the 90s, you could argue that, yeah, things started to get more and digitalized with auto-tune in 1998. But still, it's kind of towards the end of the decade and then pitch correction, I'd say, really started to kick off in the 2000s. So in terms of, you know, who needs to pitch correct their voice the most, if you can hit pitches accurately and sing well, then you don't need it. But for people that can't hit notes that are inaccurate, then those are the singers that will need it more because with a great singer you can potentially go through a whole performance and they won't need any correction because it just sounds spot on the whole way through it sounds spot on the whole way through i'm not talking about dragging it over the lines of a440 standard tuning so somebody that now doesn't sound just accurate all the time this is when the mistake happens is they listen to the voice and think, oh, it sounds out of tune or flat or sharp. So they grab the voice and put it over the line, thinking that's where the right note is. But they're not referencing the great singers who, who didn't used to use this as a reference point. They just used to sing. So, yeah, that's the problem. But obviously, the singers who aren't as accurate pitch wise need to use pitch correction more to get it to sound more in key. And it's such a huge part of singing. I'd say that I've always said that when I was learning to sing, the thing I focused the most on was pitch because you get some great singers who don't even have vibrato or and, uh, yeah, a wide vibrato. They might have a subtle vibrato in there, but they're hitting notes really accurately. And again, not on the lines all the time, but they're hitting that average frequency lots of time so this sounds pitch perfect but when you look at it on a graph it, it wouldn't be on these lines all the time so with that kind of voice being accurate pitch wise is the most important thing because you can't hit a note and then vibrato around it you hit a note and you have to try and hold it so yeah that's why I, I focused on pitch because before getting into vibrato and control and you know runs and all that kind of stuff I just wanted to be able to hit a note that I was hearing from the music, from the backing. So, you know, with me playing guitar, obviously I could play a note on my guitar and then try and match it with my voice and get a, an appreciation of where that note is and where my vocal cords are and try and match it as closely as possible. So, yeah, that's it. I spent probably a year or longer just on pitch. So, yeah, when... Other singers have great voices and they're pitch corrected. That is something that I find frustrating because I know that they don't need the pitch correction. And that's something that some people have said. And I say some people, I think it was one person in the comment section who said, and I'm not sure this is a troll corner thing, but um, I will go into it anyway, even though it's not a troll corner thing. So I'll see you guys in a second. <laughs> And the only reason that we're in Troll Corner is because I can't think of any other troll things. And I had a quick think earlier this evening, but there's nothing that resembled it. And this maybe resembles it, but it doesn't really, because it was just a person saying, uh, you say that you're objective, but you clearly have a preference for, for people 
not using pitch correction and then it was something like come on bro or something like that which was similar to maybe it's the same person uh, it's similar to another comment that i had that i might have referenced in the last live stream but with saying about i'm not being objective because I've, I've obviously got a preference myself i i said it doesn't change what we're looking at. All of the objectivity is on the screen, the pitch monitoring software and A440 standard tuning, everything that we're looking at. But I do get frustrated when a great singer has been pitch corrected because it just removes stuff from the voice. And for those people that can hear A440 standard tuning, it now sounds just almost unlistenable. Well, it is for me because I just hear them being on the lines. So when you can see it being on the lines, that's what my ears are telling me all the time. So it's like there's no expression in there. So I do have a preference that I, I would rather people aren't pitch corrected. And that's what I find frustrating. But my personal view as an artist myself and wanting to hear somebody else's artistry, that doesn't change the facts that we're looking at. So when I say that something is either pitch corrected or it isn't, we're basing that on what we're looking at rather than just saying, I think this is pitch corrected because anyone can think anything, but you need to be looking at stuff on screen that is either proving or disproving your thought process. And as I've said before, that you've got to try to evaluate everything and ideally base your opinion on facts. Uh, once you know that something is factual, then your opinion is now very well guided because you, you know that it's factual what you're talking about. So, yeah, even though I do get frustrated, it doesn't mean that I'm calling for banning pitch correction and auto tune. If people want to use it artistically, I've always said they can do, but it's still doesn't stop me being frustrated at great singers being pitch corrected like Freddie Mercury for example um that's something that I do get frustrated about but it doesn't mean that you know what we're doing isn't objective it's just that as an artist I would rather that he wasn't pitch corrected just leave the old recordings as they were so that we can hear Freddie's voice without yeah uh, being um, you know butchered and stuck on these lines because then it's no longer freddie mercury's voice but anyway that is troll corner for tonight let's get out of here Bye -bye. so getting back into the donations because we went through a couple of those uh orlando donated two dollars thank you for that orlando the message is spike the likes with lots of thumbs up great idea we're looking for 101 more people to hit that thumbs up. If you haven't hit that thumbs up, that would be great if you could do that to ensure that we get a new record for a Tuesday night live stream. But then also we'll be having the fill jam at the end of the live stream. And the reason that I'm talking slowly is I'm thinking about two things at once. 440 would be a new record for a Tuesday night. And yeah, 440. 45 I think is what we're going to be aiming for on Saturday so if you're tuning in now and you're available on Saturday if you could tune in on Saturday that would be great uh, because then we'll be trying to get a new record then as well so yeah uh, but 440 for tonight let's not take our eye off the ball for this live stream tonight right let's jump into another donation because Anna donated ten dollars as well thank you for that Anna the message is Tomorrow is Kurt Rice's birthday. Everyone wish him a very happy birthday. So thank you for that, Anna. And yes, happy birthday to Kurt and everyone. Yeah, you can uh, say that in that live chat room. Wish Kurt a very happy birthday. And Just Diney has donated $2 as well. This is the person who's uh, always too small i can read the cool but i can never see the hand sign i always say it's like rock or i don't know that there's another sign that's maybe hang loose or something i don't know what it is is it that oh, i don't know uh it's a surfing thing but maybe he's doing that i can never tell it, it looks a little bit more like some rock horns that he's got going on. Anyway, it says cool. Thank you for that, Just Diney. Right now, there was a donation right at the end of the last live stream. Not sure if I referenced it or not. I can't remember. So I'm going to say it again in, in case I did say it. But in case 
I didn't say it. Uh, Kim donated £11.13. So thank you for that, Kim. And the message was, Hi, Phil. It's so nice to be back and to see you again. My goodness, but your channel has grown. Lovely Phil Jam tonight. Thank you for your playing... Thank you for playing for us all. You rock hugs from Canada, Kim. Uh, so thank you for that, Kim. Right. Now we had another donation. This came through from Robert for £8. And that was on Sunday afternoon at 44 minutes past two. Thank you for that, Robert. That is a straight up donation. And Roseanne has donated £5. Thank you for that, Roseanne. And that was uh, Sunday at one minute past five in the evening. And the message is, Hi Phil, who would you say is the most influential musician in the world today? You can define influential any way you like. Thanks. Okay, so, I mean, I'm going to base influential on uh, the, the size of the audience, therefore how many people they can influence. And I, I think probably nowadays, I mean, it's going to be artists that I don't... Um, listen to a lot because <laughs> as you can tell from my hair it's not really the style for following today's artists but I would say that I know Kanye West is big in his field of the kind of music that he does so just because of the audience especially over in the USA I'm sure that he's somebody who is influential in music there's also Taylor Swift. I know that she's influential in music and has won lots of awards recently, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, she has a huge audience. You've then got other artists like, you know, Lady Gaga, for example. Like, she, I think, was more on the scene probably, what, maybe 10 years ago? Is it that long? 10 or 15 years ago now? So, uh, she was hugely influential when she... Uh, released her music but not only because of the audience but then the way that she progressed on from that and she, she got into movies but I mean she's just a great songwriter great vocalist and looking back at her early career uh, you can see that she really did play the game of the mu music industry with the way that she did the music videos and then checking out her live performances of, of before she then got her break of her just playing piano and singing you know and, and doing the kind of gigs that you know, everybody does, and especially musicians who might not actually get a break. You know, they've been on the circuit, they've played, you know, all of the pubs and clubs under the sun, but then she's been there and done that and then got, kind of got a break and then, yeah, moved on with her career. So I think for her, she's influential from a point of view of having a great voice, being a songwriter, and effectively almost being that independent artist, but on a, on a world stage and having that kind of following. So, yeah, that was three people. Did I, was it three or four? I can't remember. But yeah, I would go. Um, maybe if it was three, let's throw in the fourth of Dua Lipa. I, I know that she's very big here in the UK, and I assume over in the USA as well. I know that she. You know, reaches a lot of people, so she's a very influential artist as well. So uh, there you go. There, there were four, and not particularly people that, that I listen to a lot, but it doesn't mean that I don't see uh, the following and their influence, you know, as musicians, as artists. And yeah, I mean, oftentimes it's the case that people say about particular artists, oh, you know, they've just got lucky and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, I, I would say, I mean, certainly in some uh, of the cases that they got a break very early on in, in their career. And that meant that, you know, they were almost kind of either in their teenagers or their early 20s and they got a break. Um, whereas for a lot of musicians, you know, they can be playing you know, for 20 years and kind of have to work away at it and never really get a break. So um, there is that side that you could say was a little bit of luck at the right time and, you know, relying on somebody else to get the person where they needed to be. But then, you know, you can still say that having that experience like Lady Gaga of going around and gigging and actually doing it, you think, well, th there's an argument to say you're, you're making your own luck there so that when you do get a break, you are ready. Uh, because, 
imagine somebody got a break and they said, oh, I heard you play at this particular venue and I'm an A&R person for this major label and I'm going to talk to my management about you and then they offer them a deal and, you know, it might be an album or a couple of albums deal. you got to think, well, the artist has to be ready. If they say, right, we're going to sign you and the artist says, oh, but I don't, that was the only song that I had was the one that I was performing and haven't thought about any other songs and I'm just learning piano and that was the only thing I could play. You know, <laughs> you've got to be ready to go when you get your break. So that is something to be said for uh, people that do get a break and, and it might be seen as getting lucky. And I know other people say, yeah, but you know, yeah, I've been working at it for 20 years and I can do everything and I haven't got a break, but um, just playing devil's advocate <laughs> to say that, yes, yeah, some people do get a break early on in their career and therefore it means they can have more influence because you know they now have a longer time in, in the public eye but you've got to be ready to go you know you've got to have everything in place in order to make the most of that opportunity but uh, anyway thank you for that uh, Roseanne and uh, Maureen has donated uh, oh this is I mean this looks like a CD rather than a donation. So uh, thank you for that, Maureen, uh, by the way. And it's just one of those things that, I mean, this sometimes comes through during a live stream. So thank you for that order through the website. And obviously I'll be getting into that and getting up to date and sending it off. Uh, thank you for this Mary as well, who has donated five pounds. And this is a straight up donation without a message. So thank you for that. And... Andrew has donated uh, 22 pounds and 72 pence. So thank you for that, Andrew. And that is a straight up donation as well. And Tammy has donated 10 pounds. Thank you for that, Tammy. The message is, hi, Phil. Congratulations on hitting 353,000 subscribers. What things do musicians struggle with the most in their music career? So, I mean, it's funny how sometimes in, on the live streams, one question leads into another question, but I would say that, I mean, what musicians struggle with, I mean, first of all, if you've got everything in place, it's just, I guess, either getting the break that you need or having the time to put into it what needs to be put into it. And I've mentioned that a lot of times about you know, if you really want to do music full time, uh, then you've got to approach it as putting all of your time into it with the idea, the idea that I had was that in the future, all of the hours that I'm putting into it outside of my teaching guitar, all of those hours, eventually I'm going to get paid for those hours, but it, it happens in the future. You're not going to get paid for it now. You, you've got to kind of work your way through it. And then once you start getting a bit of traction, then you will start, especially if you own your publishing rights on your music, you you will earn everything from every single sale. Like that CD order, for example, I'm not giving away a percentage to, every, to anybody <laughs> or everybody, which it can seem like with the music industry, with you know, producers, management, media. You've got all these different departments that are taking a percentage. And if you just do everything yourself, own your publishing, then you get everything of everything. So it means that you don't have to sell loads and loads and loads of albums. You have to sell a tiny percentage that a major label would have to be selling in order to do everything that they do full time. But yeah, it really kind of takes the pressure off. But uh, again, you've got to make sure that you own it all, put in all of the work to you know get, get your music publishing sorted. So yeah, uh, I think the thing that musicians struggle with the most, if we're not talking about a break, is the non-creative side of it. Because in the creative side of making music, that's easy. Musicians can do that. The hardest part about it, like there are probably billions of musicians who have their own music, have their own album, but then it's a case of putting that to one side and say, right, I've got the product. Now, how do I market it? What do I do? And, you know, for me, that was a case of, yeah, messaging personally over 100,000 people over the course of three years, asking them to listen to my music, to check it out. And maybe if they do like it, you know, give it a thumbs up and, you know, maybe go to my website. So writing those messages every day, that's just something that you've got to suck it up and think, well, if I can get 
just a tiny percentage of 100,000 people to like my music. And if they buy a CD, you know, if I'm just getting, you know, 1%, 1,000 people might buy my CD, which means that I'm then earning, what, 16 grand, something like that, if you were talking about um, a CD sell and then postage as well. So that's kind of the way that I approached it, that I could live off that amount of money because, you know, I, I wasn't particularly into living, you know, lavishly. So if I could just do that, then that was my approach. And I thought if I just kept on plugging away at it, then I could just keep on doing that. So yeah, that was it. I, I know that a lot of creative, musically creative people would say, well, I don't want to sit at a computer writing message after message after message after message every day, hoping that somebody will check out my music. But you know, that's the way it is. <laughs> that's, you know, if you're trying to do it all yourself and you don't have a budget to spend on, you know, adverts and, you know, and you don't have time to create adverts and you don't have a, yeah, a media or a marketing department, you've got to try and do it all yourself and kind of put in the legwork. So I'd say that, yeah, a lot of musicians struggle with that. And that's why a lot of people want to be musicians full time, but a lot of people never make it. It's because, it's not about the music that all the musicians can play the music because they're musicians, but not every musician can put in the work outside of being a musician that it takes in order to do it. Um, and it is just literally a, a, an every minute of every day dedication. That, that's what you've got to do. And that's, um, yeah, something that if, if people saw what I did when I wake up, the first thing I do is look at my phone and, you know, it's the YouTube studio and, and checking stuff on there. So it, it's literally every second of the day you, you might have a cup of tea but then even still the, the focus is still on either emails yeah emails or future videos or analysis videos have been requested doing the research for it and you know looking into some of the comments that have happened in, for example somebody might comment saying I've emailed you uh, because I'm trying to contact you for this and then I have to go to that email address get that up on Outlook or wingspexus.com check the email reply to them and see what you know if there was a recently I've been um, part of a project that I'm currently working on at the moment as well but again this is all stuff that just happens and it's reactive now this is the thing that when you're trying to get somewhere that's being proactive. You're trying to do stuff and you're not getting anything back. But when you get to a particular level, everything's now reactive. You're just trying to keep up with everything. So, um, yeah, that's it. You've got to be prepared to be doing it all the time um, if you want to kind of keep everything moving forward. But uh, thank you for that, Tammy. And Vera has donated £7.59. pence. Thank you for that. Vera, the message is, Hi Phil, catch up crew for me tonight. My late husband's golf league is hosting a banquet in his honour tonight. I am working very hard to get myself back on my feet so I will be able to be back with this wonderful group of people. Congratulations on your ever-growing subscriber count. You are a one-man wonder. Love you all. So thank you for that, Vera. And uh, I hope that, uh, yes, that all, all goes well uh, with the banquet and that um, most likely you're watching this on Catch Up. So uh, hello, and I'm sure everybody uh, will be saying hello to you in that live chat room. And yeah, thank you. So uh, yeah, Vera sends everybody her wishes her best of wishes and her love in that live chat room. So yeah, thank you for that, Vera. And for anybody else watching in the future on Catch Up, you can hit that thumbs up. It really does help the channel to grow and for this live stream to get out there a little bit more. So I can see that we have 423 likes so far. We're looking for 17 more people to hit the thumbs up in order to have a fill jam at the end of tonight's live stream. So if you could hit that thumbs up, that would be much appreciated. Maybe we'll be able to get there. Who knows? Uh, we are quite close and we still have uh, quite a way of the live stream to go. Ooh, that's about 35 minutes, something like that. So uh, there's been another donation. This has come through from Debbie. So thank you for this, Debbie. And it's £10. And the message is, hi, Phil. Congrats on 353,000 subscribers. I am so happy your channel continues to grow and flourish. You are awesome. Love you, Debbie. So thank you for that. And Tracy 
has donated £10 as well. Thank you for that, Tracy. And the message is, Hi, Phil. Have you ever wanted a Gibson SG or a Les Paul? So, um, not really. I, I was, you know, I was going to say brought up listening to Jimi Hendrix, but that wasn't really um, the case. It's just he was the first guitarist that I kind of listened to a lot. And because he played a Fender Strat, then I wanted a Fender Strat. My dad had a Fender Strat anyway. So, uh, yeah, I always kind of went down the Fender route. And then when I got into the, the heavier genres of music and a little bit of hard rock and, you know, listening to Steve Vai and, you know, Joe Satriani, those kinds of players, I then, yeah, started to get into, you know, Ibanez guitars. And so I got my Ibanez Geo and... Yeah, at no point did, did I did I ever think, oh, I really want a Gibson SG. Well, Les Paul, I think probably, I mean, thinking back, I didn't listen to a lot of Guns N' Roses because maybe a, a lot of people might be influenced by Slash and might, might you know, see him on stage and think, oh, wow, you know, he looks so cool and, you know, I want you know, that guitar that he's playing. So, yeah, maybe it was... You know, the fact that I didn't really get into Guns N' Roses, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but then, yeah, I, I guess Gary Moore, as well, I did listen to a lot of a lot of Gary Moore, but, you know, Les Paul is something that I, I never really felt the need, because once I had a Fender Strat, because I, you know, I didn't have loads and loads of money, once I had a Fender Strat, that was basically it. And then I uh, changed or edited, uh, customized my Fender Strat in order to have a dual blade pickup in there, which is like, you know, having a humbucker. So it means that I could get a more aggressive sound with a Fender Strat. So I kind of started to be able to get the, the a similar kind of more distorted sound and more aggressive sound from my Fender Strat that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to get. So yeah, uh, so rather than getting another guitar to do the job, I just kind of customize my one to, to do the job of having that heavier sound for the heavier style of music that I was playing. Uh, so uh, thank you for that, Tracy. And Lisa A has donated, or should I say Lisa A.W. Um, has donated £10. So thank you for that, Lisa. And that is a straight up donation from Lisa W. So uh, thank you as well to Lisa W again. Let me just check that I didn't imagine that. Yeah, there's another donation that came through straight after that from Lisa again. So thank you for that. That's another 10 pounds donation. If that was an accidental double donation, don't worry about that. We can organize that afterwards and I will send that back to you. And Karen has donated two pounds and 65 pence. So thank you for that, Karen. And the message is, Hi Phil, congrats on hitting 353,000 subscribers. I feel your frustration regarding pitch correction, great singers voices, or pitch correcting, great singers voices. To air is human, so let's air on the side of art. Uh, thanks for all you do and for being you. Cheers, Karen. So uh, thank you for that, Karen. And that is it. We are now up to date in that PayPal window. So, uh, Scott from South Carolina has donated £20. Thank you for that, Scott. And the message is, is it time for pizza again, Phil? And, I mean, Scott might have some inside information here from Domino's Pizza. Which evening was it? There was something that happened, and this is part probably... Um, or part due to me working on this other project, which is all um, in combination with everything that I normally do. And everything that I normally do keeps me busy 24 seven. So when I then try and do something else that is on top of that, it means that I have to find the time somewhere. And the time that I found, the time that I found, <laughs> or the place that I found the time was eating. I thought if I don't eat, then yeah, I might be able to sneak in 15 minutes here, half an hour there to work on this project. So anyway, long story short, it meant that on this particular day, I realized that I hadn't eaten and it was half nine or 10 p.m. So I thought, well, because I'm still working, I haven't got time to do anything. So I ordered a pizza 
and it was a small pizza and it was a Texas barbecue pizza which is very nice indeed but because it was small I just had that by itself so it was as healthy as I could make it but I knew that I needed some kind of food for the day so that's what I had and the fact that I haven't had a pizza since before Christmas was it or did I have a pizza straight after Christmas because the Christmas wasn't as yeah it wasn't as bad nutritionally as I thought it was going to be I, I thought I was going to be really bad over Christmas uh, so therefore I was really healthy but I was really healthy over Christmas so then yeah I had a pizza maybe at the beginning of the year but where are we now that'd be beginning of Jan March and I mean we're getting towards the end of March so that's maybe one pizza every two to three months so if I keep that up it means that I'll have maybe four pizzas a year so and I think that's fine I can deal with that um and yeah that was a bit of an emergency situation but thank you for that Scott and yeah uh, it was very nice indeed and the good thing is I think if you get a small pizza and I would recommend people do this is whenever I would get a medium pizza and my record is to <laughs> when I was at university I got to win within half a slice of eating a large by myself from Domino's um, but I think my stomach must have been huge then because I was uh, exercising all the time so I mean I was eating loads and loads and loads of food and then burning it off probably either just later that evening or you know for either the football match that happened the next day or the training that happened the next day or the gym session that happened the next day and it's just a constant thing but yeah I was eating a lot more I think my stomach must have been bigger because now when I eat a small pizza it's absolutely fine it, it once I finish the last slice I feel like yes I'm full up but because of the taste of it I know that if the pizza was any larger I would keep on eating but so I think get a small one because then once it's gone it's gone you can't do anything you think oh that tasted really nice I would eat more of it because I like the taste but then I think I always regret it whenever I start eating for the taste so uh, yeah uh, there you go uh, there's my advice for eating pizza um, obviously it's not so good if there are lots of people you need lots of pizza but for just one person I always try to go for the small and um, pretty much of, of whatever I'm having um, whether it be Domino's or you know Pizza Hut or haven't had a Pizza Hut in probably about 10 years but yeah just going for the small version of it right let's get back into the live stream rather than pizza chat but thank you guys for the donations uh, they are massively appreciated because I know you don't have to donate and you don't have to donate uh, just watching is great and that's all I ask of you but yeah the donations do make a huge difference so I appreciate them greatly and we are going to be jumping into at some point the cover video which I haven't even mentioned tonight is between Parisian walkways and to be with you so yeah have your say on either of those two and uh, to be with you has 53% of the vote for tonight so yes have a look I think somebody's comment just went through underneath that vote something about am I a personal trainer or can I be a personal trainer or something like that I used to be a personal trainer uh, when I was I think 18 uh, around that kind of time so this is the other thing when I say about when I was younger and going to university and at university my stomach was probably a lot bigger I was eating a lot of calories I was also working as a personal trainer so it, mean, that, it meant that my training sessions my football training sessions my football matches I was then going and, and training people and one of the people that I was training for example just wanted to lose as much weight as possible and he lost something like I mean he was like 15 or 16 stone and he got down to I think 11 and a half something like that so yeah it's probably about a four stone weight loss which was you know great for uh, me as a personal trainer because it meant that what I was telling him to do uh, worked but uh, um, this is another thing that I, I would advise yeah if you are trying to lose weight just don't go crazy with it you want to still be balanced with what you're doing and, and make sure you're taking in the energy that you need for the exercise so that you can start to kind of lose health lose health lose weight a healthy way uh, that's a really important thing because you sometimes see these people that are just going on diets of right I'm just gonna drink water with you know 
sugar in and mix it up and that's all I'm going to have. Um, yeah, people don't understand that when you exercise, you need energy for that exercise. And what it's like, I always say, why aren't there more overweight people doing the marathon? You know, like when you're looking at the Olympics and you're seeing the final of the marathon or the final of the 5,000 meters, the 10,000 meters, the 15,000 meters, uh, however many meters it is, why are they all looking the same? It's because, it, and they're eating, you would not believe how many calories they are eating a day. It's because they are fueling their bodies with the calories and then doing the exercise. So it's kind of using uh, the food as fuel and because they're burning it off obviously it's, it's never getting stored so it's kind of understanding that relationship that the when you eat a lot of food and then you exercise and say that you exercise and you do resistance training it when if you then eat enough protein your muscles now develop and they adapt which means that your muscle now needs more calories so I think this is probably something that helps me without, you know, well, eating pizza and not putting on weight is that I know that my calorific needs, my body and, and the, the muscle that I have, it's hungry. It eats calories. So it means that you basically increase your, um, or well, I almost use something fancy there, s some sports science education coming back, your resting metabolic rate, which is just, um, there's a more common way to say this, but it's the rate. I'm only getting the official name for it. And it's your, oh, th my brain isn't going to give me the more common word for it, but <laughs> I don't know why I can't pick up on this word, but it's your, the, the, the rate at which you burn calories just doing nothing. And now that I've got metabolic rate in my head, obviously people that know about sports science will know what I'm talking about. And then people, uh, metabolism, of course, it's the same word. So yeah, metabolism, which uh, means metabolic rate, uh, the rate at which you burn calories just sitting there doing nothing. Your, your metabolism changes when you exercise. So if you've got lots of muscle, this is, this is why bodybuilders eat 5,000 calories a day, 6,000 calories a day, and they still look the way that they do. They're just pure muscle. They, they, they don't get obese from eating that many calories. It's, yeah, their metabolism, their, their muscles are saying, I need food. So the bodybuilders are eating food and the muscles are saying, thank you. We need this food just to stay, stay the size that we are. Um, but again, uh, that's another point about bodybuilding. I'm not really into kind of bodybuilding where I know that a lot of people who do it competitively obviously have to take steroids and yeah that's just part of the game but yeah with steroids for me yeah it's a little bit risky because it's exactly the same as becoming a beast uh, you're building your body up that your your heart wasn't designed to supply blood uh, to this much body um, because it, it hasn't adapted that way throughout, you know, millions of years of, of our history. So, yeah, when you're suddenly now in one generation putting all of this muscle on or weight, because, you know, muscle is weight, then, yeah, it puts a, a strain on the heart. And, yeah, sadly, there have been many, many cases of bodybuilders dying from um, heart failure and heart disease because the, the heart just isn't designed to... to um, yeah, su supply blood to this much mass. Uh, it's really having to overwork all the time. Um, and especially with bodybuilding, you know, you're, you're putting yourself through a hell of a lot in each training session. So your heart is, yeah, uh, really having to overwork. I remember there's always one case that I was doing at sports science and we were studying steroids and bodybuilding and everything. And this one particular case the person died from heart failure because his heart, because the heart is a muscle, because he was exercising so much, his heart was growing with the rest of his muscle, you know, density around his body. Just his heart eventually grew so big because the rib cage doesn't grow as well. It's bone. So it, it is set. So if you are genetically uh, predisposed to have a small rib cage because you were naturally skinny when you were younger. Well, that's just your DNA. That's how you're meant to be. If you now start taking steroids, of course, that small rib cage 
has got a heart in there, if this heart keeps on growing and growing and growing, it's going to press against the rib cage. Uh, and that's what happened to this particular bodybuilder's heart, that it literally got too big and couldn't expand anymore and failed. So, yeah, I mean, when you think about the skeletal system of a human being and then imagine like either somebody who's obese or a bodybuilder, all of that extra mass around those, you know, those bones, the bones don't change. It's just a hell of a lot for the heart to now have to deal with. So anyway, yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> There's a, a little bit of, um, I guess, trivia about, uh, yeah, bodybuilding, but just how just having more mass, no matter what it is, uh, will, yeah, uh, negatively affect your heart. So yeah, let's get back into the, um, oh yeah, Ro says enlarged heart is a disease. Uh, so thank you uh, for that, Ro. I just saw that particular um, a message. So yeah, this is the other thing that uh, sadly is, is now becoming so commonplace that not even taking steroids for athletic performance, like professionally, just guys who go to the gym who just want to look a bit better are, are doing steroids. And I know that that's a fact. So uh, yeah, it's a real shame that they don't really appreciate the dangers of it. And, you know, I would rather, you know, with myself working out and kind of getting back into doing some exercise now, you know, I, I've never taken stories as far as I've gone. It's literally protein shakes. So, uh, and even that's unflavored. So, and not even, you know, having a banana or strawberry or chocolate flavored shake. I just, you know, used to drink the, um, unflavored. It wasn't, didn't taste very nice, but yeah, that's, as, as much as I did just taking in protein, which is just another way of rather than eating a steak, you can drink a, a milkshake that gives you protein, but it doesn't have anything in there other than, other than protein, other than what you get from eating meat. So yeah, uh, I've never had anything performance enhancing. I just don't want to kind of go anywhere near that. I exercise and whatever point my body gets to, then I'm absolutely fine with that because everybody will reach a point where you can't get any bigger uh, with your muscles and, and that's your genetic limit. And I'm happy um, yeah, with, with that. Just whatever my body gets to is absolutely fine by me. Right, let's move into tonight's uh, cover video because that is, by the looks of it, going to be to be with you. I'll bring that to a close. Oh, we have Picture corner, just one picture that we're going to be taking a look at tonight. So we'll jump into that in a second. Actually, a few minutes because we'll get into this cover video for tonight. And it's my version of To Be With You, the Mr. Big Classic, of course. And I'll catch you guys uh, after this. Rock. Show me what he's done to you Stand up, little girl A broken heart can't be that bad When it's through, it's through Love will twist the both of you So come on, baby, come on over Let me be the one to show you I'm the one who wants to be with you Deep inside I hope you So come on baby, come on over Let me be the one to hold you I'm the one who I'm wants to be with yeah. you Deep inside I hope you feel it too, feel it too. Waited on a line of Waited dreams on the line Just to be the next to be with you It's the 
And there we have it. That was my version of To Be With You. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now we are going to be jumping into a Picture Corner to just have a look. Oh, Joe says, we need a hair update. So, um, hair update. I got some shampoo that was supposed to be... Well, the first one that I tried was supposed to make your hair thicker, but I wasn't too sure about it. Um, and then I bought another one that's supposed to make your hair thicker, and that I tried for the first time tonight, but uh, I think my hair just looks exactly the same. And even worse than that, I don't know why, but my hair was curling all over the place. Uh, so much so that at the back, for some reason, and this happened... Yeah, I think this happened on the last live stream where it was defying gravity at the back. So it's kind of going up in the air and no matter how much I pushed it down, it wouldn't um, go. So I had to wet my hair again and then kind of hold it and, and dry it, hoping that the curls uh, could be yeah, out battled and outgunned uh, by just wetting it and holding it in, in the same place. But yeah, so this is the first um, time of using this particular um, yeah, shampoo. Whether I think I might just go back to the other one because I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> I can't really tell any difference between one and the next, really. So uh, there you go. There's a hair update. It's. I mean, I was lucky tonight in that once my hair had decided to behave, it kind of went in a normal arrangement. Sometimes you've got hair that's kind of over on this side, wanting to go all the way over, and it's just. An absolute pain, but yeah, so uh, that's the hair update for tonight. Uh, initially, it was a disaster, but then I just wet my hair again, and then it was fine. So, uh, there's been another donation over on PayPal, and uh, Karen's donated £1.52. Thank you for that, and the message is, Phil, your bodybuilding trivia reminded me of the WWE wrestlers of the past, particularly the Ultimate Warrior. He was a bodybuilder before he came a wrestler. Um, thanks for the info, Karen. So, yes, uh, thank you for that. And, um, yeah, we've spoken about uh, the Ultimate Warrior before uh, during a live stream. And this is, I mean, a lot of the wrestlers have that bodybuilding um, history. But I, I think especially back in the 80s and the 90s, they had that bodybuilding look. And, yes, sadly, the kind of size that they get to, you need some kind of performance-enhancing agent in order to allow that to happen whether that be kind of steroid or growth hormone or testosterone or you know using um lots of different terms for it you need something to get you past that genetic ceiling that everybody has so everybody will train and no matter how much more you train you won't get any further on in terms of you know muscle density and size so yeah then if, when you reach that point that's where you, you need to now do something that's uh, manipulated and the body can't do. You need to feed um, yeah, your, your body drugs in order for it to then uh, superficially get past that um, that ceiling, so, which, yeah, is impossible. And this is why some people, no matter how much they work out, they, you know, might look quite good, but they've kind of hit that genetic ceiling of not looking really, you know, overly muscular, but just athletic. So, yeah, um, yeah that's uh, just the way that it works. Anyway, thank you for that, Karen. Right. We are going to be jumping into Picture Corner because I said we'd go there. So let's jump into it. And I have to make sure I click on the right thing. I'm going to take a gamble. It's this. And it was that. Now, I don't, because this is always a bit random as to the screen grab and what it's going to look like and where it puts it on the screen. It's put it in the middle, which is good. So. Yes, thank you, Laura, for linking me to this. This is a picture from the recent Zoom call over on the Wings of Pegasus supporters group on Facebook. You guys can join that page if you want to. And I did mention it in the last live stream that it was going to be happening afterwards. So the message is... Uh, oh, this is from Laura. P participants in the Zoom call after last week's live stream. Here is Vince's comment. Friends, we had a great Zoom after the live stream. Here's a picture from that video call. From uh, top left to right, Vince, Michael, Bob, Liz, Teresa, Barbara, Joe, Lisa, and Kevin. At times, some other people dropped in, like Anna and Liz. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that, and uh, yeah, for Vince for uploading that, and you know, 
doing the whole Zoom call, all of that cool stuff. And uh, Bob hosts the after party over on that page after the live streams, if you guys want to check that out, which uh, Vince used to host as well. So you can go over to the Wings of Pegasus supporters group over on Facebook, if you're a Facebook user. Right, let me get rid of that. And let's get back to here. So, 523 likes so far. Uh, we've definitely hit the target. So thank you guys for ensuring another record for tonight's live stream. And again, we're going to be trying to do it all over again on Saturday. And uh, we need everybody to try and tune in if they can. So if you're available, it'd be great to see you. 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time on Saturday. And obviously we do it on Tuesday as well because that's where we are now. We are going to be jumping into tonight's Phil Jam. I don't know how long it is, but we've got 11 minutes left of the live stream. Let me find this. It's a oh no. It's a little, okay, it's just displaying it a little bit weirdly, but I can see it. So uh, Joe's message saying bump for uh, Phil Jam number 124, Strat, I guess, clean, a little round the keys, musical tour, has an end, don't forget, and Mike, uh, so thank you for that, Joe. And this is six minutes and 25 seconds, which means that we'll be finishing at 11 minutes past. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's all the setup. Right, microphone and strap is already plugged in, which is good. Now, as for uh, clean, uh, Get clean on there. Right, oh, let me actually click on the link. That's gonna help. Right, so as for the levels, not really sure how uh, it's gonna work. As always, let me know in the live chat room if you can hear everything. Uh, can you hear this? Hopefully, <laughs> I can hear it, but uh, whether it goes through the computer is another thing. Right, let's oh, click on this. Is it gonna go to Build an advert? Yeah, it went to an advert. Let me mute that. Ooh. Okay, right, we've got a couple of adverts. So this is coming from uh, Guitar Lessons 36? Oh, 365. <laughs> it's because I have the screen so small, it's had to abbreviate it or make it shorter. Um, and it says Guitar Lesson 36, but it's actually Guitar Lessons 365. That is the name of this particular channel. If you want to check it out, let me skip the advert. And this is called, make sure the volume's gonna be okay. This is called Incredible Improvisation Backing Track, soloing through all minor keys. Okay, well, this is gonna be fun. So this is, um, as Joe said, a mystery tour. So we, yeah, we'll, we'll have a little go through and see what happens for going through all the minor keys. But it's, it's only, six minutes and 25 seconds so um yeah it isn't kind of super long uh, and oh just uh, calvin has just donated 37 pounds and 89 pence uh, so thank you for that calvin uh, that is very much appreciated uh, over on paypal right um oh zoom right zoom out is that it mic on so you can hear that hopefully of my guitar. Let's have a listen to this, see what's going on. I'm not hearing anything. Okay, I haven't got any sound here. Oh! It hadn't started yet, that's why.
this up. I know it's going to be changing, so I need to hear it clearly. to get away with a little bit of dirtiness here. a sudden ending and what a bit of a fade out yeah <laughs> so there we go there's a solo in every minor key so what's really important about that is being able to hear the 
the backing because obviously it's changing all the time. So I think at some point, yeah, I, I kind of misheard it as going um, either a semitone up or down and try to recover as quickly as possible. But once the, uh, yeah, once I actually got the right level so I could hear the track, towards the end, yeah, a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> better so anyway thank you for that Joe I think probably the most all over the place um, yeah it's actually quite nicely put together like melodically some of the changes that are in there and yeah I mean I, I kind of intentionally made a point to not look at over there because as soon as you try and kind of move to the keys or at least I find that as soon as you start moving to the keys you're now not kind of singing the notes anymore you're now looking at oh where am I oh I'm you know in you know a a minor or oh, I'm in B minor or you know in, in G minor so you start jumping around to positions rather than playing melodically through this thing that just gives out a noise <laughs> so it's playing noise at the end of the day so uh, yes thank you for that interesting one tonight first time we've ever done something uh, like that playing through every single key right we are going to be calling things to a close now. So yeah, thank you guys for tuning in tonight. As always, going to be here with a video tomorrow night, Friday night, and live streaming again Saturday night, 11 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So I'll see you guys then. If you are available, that is where I will be. But yeah, thank you for joining me and for hitting the thumbs up, getting us to another record for tonight. For 440, even though I can see it's now 541. Uh, if you're watching this on the catch up, you can keep on hitting that thumbs up. It really does help the live stream to get out there and for the channel to grow on the whole. So I will catch you guys at tomorrow night's video. Thank you for your company. And all that's left for me to say is try to stay as safe and as sane as possible in this crazy world in which we live. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock! <laughs>